in the process of uh, you know rebuilding this lathe. I need to take this uh, motor apart here. I'm gonna paint the pulley too. So I'm gonna take the pulley off. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you can see it's pretty greasy inside there. But what I want to do is I want to look at the start uh, start capacitor. Check that with my ES ESR meter. Uh, maybe get a new one just because I, these things they don't last forever. They're, the electrolytic capacitors. Plus, I hear this. Do you hear that? I feel like that only makes that noise. I have actually, because I plugged it in, now you can actually test it. I can, the motor actually works. I can actually go back and forth with it. Let me just show you that real fast. Plug it in, make sure it's off. Okay. All right, let me show you that real fast. Four. The bearings don't sound bad. It makes that noise when the actual, uh, the capacitor goes back in, the start capacitor, um, or the, the centrifugal clutch that actually activates as part of the start capacitor. Um, all right, so I'm gonna take that pulley off. Plus I wanna degrease this whole thing. I'm gonna take the whole thing apart and look at it. Uh, check the bearings. Um, yeah, I wanna pull the motor apart, like I said, until I clean it out, because who knows what's inside of it, you know? Because most likely this is probably a uh, air-cooled. So it's probably sucking in. <laughs> All kinds of dust and dirt. Yeah, so we get this thing apart. So I was saying, it's probably there's an internal fan in there that's sucking all dirt and debris in. So um, you know this is an old Dayton motor because of the way the tag is. I mean, they haven't done this tag since like the 50s, 70s, you know, with the metal tag. Um, all right, so first things first, get the pulley off. I don't know if this is, I don't think it, should, it shouldn't be pressed on, but I can't get it off. It's very tight. So, um, Plus, this material is, I don't, know if, I don't know if this is amic or not, but it feels like a really light material. So I want to be really careful with it. But, you know, because it actually has a set a set key and also, or a set screw and like a, what's it called, Woodruff key? I can't remember what it's called. Um, so I don't want to pull it with a three jaw puller from here because I don't want to break one of these fins. So I might pull it from the back. I don't even use a puller. Actually, I'm getting it off my hand. I just used a little WD 40 in it, took off the set screw. So that's good. It's not pressed in. Right, I'm not even sure if I'm going to touch that. I mean, this must be because it's part of the uh, reverse mechanism. But on a single phase motor, you'd probably see like three wires typically. Hot, neutral, um, or hot, too hot, it's like 220, uh, and a ground. Uh, this has four, so I'm assuming that's because of the reverser. I'm not sure. Because I have four wires coming, the source has four wires coming into it. Like I said, I have more experience with three-phase motors than I do with these single-phase. Um, yeah, three-phase is way better. So you don't have to deal with like, the whole star capacitor, centrifugal clutch, you know. Plus you can control RPM like with a VFD or whatever. So um, eventually I might change that over. I mean, I'm kind of trying to keep it stock, keep it the way it is. You know, you should actually mark them um, where you take it apart so you put it back in the same orientation. But it looks like I, somebody already did the three dots. Anytime you're going to work on one of these uh, single phase motors, you should deactivate these capacitors. Hope you can see that. I mean, it's not too bright. I think it's light. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but it's kind of leaking. Um, you can put that over here. But you can kind of see how it's kind of corroded. It looks like it's leaking. I'm going to test it, but I'm not going to obviously reuse that because these things don't last forever. I know how old this is. And once I take it apart, I don't want to. I mean, I want to put it back together and not have to worry about it for a while. So that's why I'm taking this apart. Um, yeah, just because you don't want to, you want to make sure this discharged. It dis that's why you want to discharge it. <laughs> I wasn't actually expecting that kind of spark. Um, obviously, it's a good capacitor. I'm or wouldn't start it, but yeah, that's why you don't want to work on your motor without discharging this first. That would hurt bad. Look, I think this capacitor was leaking for a while. See that white crust. The wiring is a little nuts. I'm thinking I might have to take, take the wiring apart to pull the cover off. But every single feeder wire is black. Um, the guy looks like he put some white tape on the neutral. <clears throat> so I might have to label that on my own. I might have to find a way so I can put it back. Like Then there's two wires going to that phase, the hot phase. Um... 
interesting. And a couple of them have two pairs. I'm guessing this has to do with the reversing. I just have um, seeing that, but so I marked the yellow. I know that's the ground. The red is was connected to the red wire. The, the blacks that are bundled together. I'm gonna keep them bundled together. Are for the uh, black wire. And the white wire was already marked. So, all right. So now I want to get the cover off. I can pull it on camera. I'm gonna we'll fish it through here. Look at the. Get the I want to look at the. Wow, well, look at that little zip tie too. Let's take that off. Obviously, I'm not the kind of guy. The motto that if it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> yeah, I just like I said, once it's already back in place, you know, I don't want to have to deal with this later. You know, like it's getting harder to pull the whole machine out. So, yeah, I knew this would happen. But the the bearings feel. Mm, you feel. A little crunchy? I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna make these uh, areas where it issues. So getting this thing pulled out, so I got, I put two screwdrivers, one on here, one on here. Pop this out. Yeah, that was a headache trying to figure it out because I couldn't find any diagrams online anywhere. And that comes out. So I noticed that as I've been pulling this out, there's a ton of chips in there. So um, I wanna check this back bearing too as well. Um, but this, like a, I think it's like an insulator of some sort that goes somewhere in here. That's the actual, that's a centrifugal clutch right there. So, um, now I can get the back cover off. You know, I couldn't find one video online of a Dayton single phase motor like this. Um, because I wanted to see what it looked like internally before I took it apart and I couldn't find it like this. Um. All right, so the start capacitor goes up through here. Yeah, this is hooked up to one phase. The yellow, which is the ground. Well, at least I'm not sure if that's ground, but on that wire coming in, it's on the green green side. And then the other one's here, and this other one feeds back a coil. So the other 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 side of the capacitor is here, and that feeds back one of the one of the start phase. <clears throat> so in here, there should be like a start phase. I'm thinking it's maybe I don't know one of these in here somewhere here. Um, so it gives it the extra oomph to get it going. So once it gets started and moving, then it disables the centrifugal clutch and disables that coil. So here um, I also notice this thing is plastic. I'm guessing it's some sort of insulator. So I might need to 3D print something. You can just see all the chips coming out of it as I'm. It was actually more chips coming out of it than that. Yeah, you don't want that in your motor. <laughs> So this back bearing even sounds worse. I don't... What brand is that? Hopefully it's Timken. Can't see. But, alright, so I'm going to pressure wash. Not pressure, actually I'm just going to bring soap and water. Um, the whole motor. Alright, so it's hard for the background noise. Got to get these bearings off. Um, so it's actually easy. I, I can use this as a steering wheel uh, or power steering uh, puller. For a power steering uh, pulley or a car. But I do actually have a shop press. I, I'm actually going to use that to put them back on, but to get them off, I'm going to use this. I mean, I have all different kinds of pullers to get bearings off. I could actually put them behind there. Um, like one of those, I forgot what it's called, but it's like reverse clamp. So I'm going to just screw this and pull off. Put a little lube on the shaft. Do the same thing for the back one, too, here. So here are what I was talking about. You could actually do like, yeah, a three jaw puller, maybe. But the issue with one of these things right here is I can't. The fan's kind of in the way, so don't have a lot of little options here. Um, all right, so this seems like the best method here. Yeah, I'm not be using these bearings. I'm pulling from the outside race, but typically you don't usually want to pull from the outside race. Um, just because you could said you could screw the bearings up, you typically want to pull from the inside, but you don't have a lot of options here because of the fan. But um, all right, I'm with the other one, same thing. Um, so here the bearings. These are actually uh, what 6203 Hoover SKA. I don't know what these are the original ones because these are like Japanese bearings. Hoover NSK. I know NSK is a Japanese company. So I got some Timken bearings in the way. Yeah, because this is a Dayton motor, an old Dayton motor, so I don't know if they were getting Japanese bearings back then. So I think this might have been rebuilt at some point. I definitely know it had been painted. But the bearings, if you can hear that. I mean, they just feel like they're, the grease is not on me anymore. Like this one especially here. This one actually feels a little crunchy, but at $12, I'm not going to even mess around with this. Because like I said, I mean, I'm getting a new Stark capacitor for this thing. Might as well do the bearings. 
Alright, so the new tin can bearing just came in. And also got a new star capacitor. These are real. I got these on Amazon, 12 bucks. Link down below, but tempkinbearings.com. But I don't know if they do on the cheap bearings, but normally you'd have like this kind of like this, like a, a thinic foil or something. Yeah, like a, I don't know, like, wait, what thinic? It's like some kind of iridescent foil. <laughs> All right, so I don't know, press these on. So let's. Um, Alright, so this bottom bearing is kind of easy because I can just push it right down onto it. Okay. Alright, so on this side and on the inner race, or on the uh, other side, you want to push it from the inner race right here. Um, you don't definitely want to push it anywhere on the outside because that could break the bearing. Push on it here, so I need to kind of build this up with a socket. That should give me enough clearance to get all the way down on the shaft. If this thing doesn't deform too much, it's it's like brass or something. That should give me enough clearance. So here and there. All right, let's do it. Let's make sure that thing bottoms out. All right, perfect. Well, between working on my cars and all these machines I'm restoring. I actually use that bearing press a lot more than I ever thought I would. Um, I actually use it all the time. So, for putting seals on, bearing replacement, pushing things out. Um, all right, nice, new, smooth bearings. Contacts look pretty good. I might have a little deoxid on there. Well, I kind of blew it on the label. I forgot how uh, toxic uh, it's the casserole purple power. Or the, not purple power, it's casserole purple like degreaser. But on these old labels, man, it just takes the paint right off. I actually uh, kind of lucked out on my craftsman over there. I saw it in time and I, I didn't touch it. But yeah, I forgot. I, I just rubbed my hand across and it came right off. So it sucks that the motor is probably 60 years old and it's 50, 60 years old. And I'm the one that messes the label up. <laughs> I got the wires pressed through. I'm going to show you this, but got this thing all cleaned up. The thing in there, got the right wire through. I'm going to line up those three dots right there. And I just got done putting out a spacer, like that paper spacer that broke. Um, okay. And then got the star capacitor we're going to put on there. So I'm probably going to do that right now. Like yeah, so the that. Amazon replacement capacitor. Obviously, it's made in China. It was like less than ten dollars. Yeah, I mean you say. All right, so I gotta put that on there. It's not polarity specific because it's AC. Like if you saw like a DC cap, you'd see a, a positive and a negative. I was gonna pop that in, put that in there, and then I guess I don't. This doesn't look factory. I'm not sure if that's factory. He put it in there, but I think he did it as like a protection to for the contacts. All right, so those contacts don't look great, and they don't sit tight on there. So I'm just going to clamp them down a little bit, put a little deoxid on them, and that will actually clean the contacts, or at least clean the oxidation of it. You know, I always I use this on a lot of my videos, but the stuff is incredible. Um, it's like really expensive, but it's, I mean, this is nothing better than cleaning oxidation contacts. I think it's like $26 for a little bottle like this, but it's incredible. I mean, fixed contacts like mouse buttons and everything you can think of. Put a link down below. All right, so this is where that little contacts they touch. So I'm gonna put just a little bit. Of, I don't know if I should use. Hmm. Might use a little, maybe some. This is dielectric, but maybe it, this might be better off with. Um, maybe a little bit of. Um, Lithium grease, maybe. Yeah, this feels too sticky. So, scrap the dielectric grease. My issue with the dielectric grease is it was too sticky. Um, all right, so I'm using the silicone grease. I actually have lithium grease too, but lithium grease is really, it's super messy. It's hard to get off too. I mean, it sticks to everything. So just a little bit, that way it just loses contact as it goes around. 
You know, when I first took the part, I mean, I saw, I saw that broken paper washer, so I 3D printed another little spacer. I think it's really just a vibration dampener, because it goes in the very back of it, at least the way it looked. But I, I think it, when the person put it back together, it had already fallen out, because it was already out. I could see it in the case before I even had the thing separated. So I'm just going to push that down to the bottom, if I can get it. All right, let's get this thing in there. So I'm just going to slowly, gently get this down in there. Try to avoid hitting this, this centrifugal clutch. And this is actually like the thing that puts tension on the back. So this puts the this pushes the other the, the bottom bearing against that little three D printer uh, thing I just showed you. So, so the lid just came right on. I should have filmed it, but before I pound this down in, in this in the place, I'm gonna get these things through. That way, another line before I do the final pound down. All right. Even just with the you know that that silicone grease really helped out. I think the the scrunch because what you, what you heard before was like that plastic coming around here on the uh, centrifugal clutch. All right, nice and lubed up. Yeah, it doesn't spend very much time rubbing there typically because as soon as you turn it on, that thing deactivates. All right, so as I'm putting the caps back on, I'm just putting some a couple drips of deoxid in there. All right, got it back together. Still, I'm painting this box. I have tape on it. The forward reverse box. Let's try forward. Like I said it's gone in that lathe over there. It's, I didn't tell you already. All right. It's a pretty nice pop right there on the what's it called the uh, the start uh, centrifugal clutch reverse. I mean, this is only slightly bigger. I mean, it's like 340 to 408 microfarads, um, whereas the other one is 340. And it's usually a 20% fluctuation. All right, guys, cool. That's how you rebuild a whole Dayton motor. So if you're interested in these kind of videos, I'm redoing this lathe over here. I'm kind of going section by section, and uh, almost done with it, you know? A lot of work. I mean, I've taken this thing piece by piece, every single bolt, cleaned everything. So, all right, and that's the motor to it. All right, awesome. Hopefully this video helps somebody.